pre-calc lesson number four of the day or something like that. So let's talk about determining the domain of a function without the use of a graphing calculator. Now domain is the x's that a graph can take on. Well, equations make those graphs. And if you want to find domain without the, well, let's call it a crutch of a graphing calculator, you need to look at the equation itself. And there's really only two problems or two issues with um, uh, when you're looking for a domain of an algebraic equation or function. Now, unless we're talking, of course, about trig functions, which are a whole different story, that's chapters from now, the sine, cosine, tangent, they're a little bit different. But when you're looking at just a pure algebra equation at this level of math, pre-calculus, we're looking for the fact that you cannot divide by zero and you cannot take the even root of a negative number. So let's run through quite a few examples here in the next 15 minutes. So I've got, well, 15 minutes. And uh, see how many we can get through uh, before our time is allotted. So is there an issue with the domain of f of x equals 3x squared plus 4x minus 7? Well, the answer to this question is no. There's not a problem with domain. The domain is going to be your x's from negative infinity to positive infinity and beyond. And the reason why is because, well, okay, let's talk about, you know, we're not going to break out a graphing calculator, but when you have one power of two, is that not a parabola? And when your x is squared, your parabola will open up or down and therefore move left and right forever. So the domain's all real numbers. Let's take a look at another function. Oh, do you know what I like about chalkboards so much, even though they make me a mess? A box of 12 pieces of chalk costs a dollar, which is way more than dry board markers. You know what else I like uh, chalkboards for? Because you can make the kids cringe at just at the slightest drop of a hat. I love that chalkboard sound. Anyway, let's take a look at the next problem. We have f of x is equal to uh, 2x squared plus 6x plus 4 over x plus 1. Now, what's the problem here? Right away we can look at this and see that we have x in the denominator. x in the denominator, that's a problem. You can't divide by 0. So let's see if that denominator can be made to equal 0. Well, clearly, if I just subtract both sides by 1, I get x cannot equal negative 1. So my domain is going to be all my x's from negative infinity to negative 1. And I can skip over that and pick back up on the other side of negative 1 and go to positive infinity. Or beyond! Uh, so why am I leaving you this extra space here? Well, actually I don't think I left enough. Uh, but let's see if I can fit this in the top. I want to simplify this function here and show you that sometimes the domain, uh, the domain issues or the domain restrictions can kind of disappear, but you still have to pay attention to them. Uh, a lot of times when your denominator equals zero, or can be equal to zero, you have some form of asymptote, whether it's vertical or slanted asymptote. With this one, though, um, we're not going to be able, we're not going to be left with this denominator. If I factor the top, which is going to be, uh, well, you might want to see that review, huh? So, I just did this in another video. I think I used this exact same function. But, let's see. I told you that you could take the first and last term, multiply them together. This is like scratch work on the side. And look for factors of that product that add to the middle term. Well, the middle term is 6x. So, if I used 2 and 4, this is the same example. I apologize if you just watched the other one. Um, 2x squared, oh, and I'm going to use these and put x's next to them. I'm using the 2 and 4 because they add up to 6. So plus 2x from there, plus 4x from there, plus 4 over x plus 1. And now with these four terms, the way I've split up the 6 in the middle, I can do factor by grouping. These two terms both that share a 2x. 2x squared divided by 2x is x, and 2x divided by 2x is 1. And then these both have a 4, so I can factor that out. Now look, now I've got two big terms which also both have a factor of x plus 1. 
I can take that out and write the x plus 1 twice, or just once instead of twice, leaving me with 2x plus 4 over x plus 1. Well, guess what? Our denominator canceled out. Now, if you think that 2x plus 4 is the answer, you'd be right. But the 2x plus 4 implies that the domain is all real numbers because there's no division left. That undefined value, actually, if you look at a graph, would be a whole at negative 1, not a vertical asymptote, but that's beyond the scope of today's lesson, other than we just want to make sure that x cannot equal 1 for the domain. So let's take a look at the next problem, shall we? The next problem I would like to go over with you today is f of x is equal to the square root of x squared plus 3. Well, now you go, whoa, okay, you just told me a second ago, I cannot take the even root of a negative number. So what's inside has to remain positive. x squared plus 3 has to remain positive. Well, how good are you with your math? If you take this number and you square it, it stays positive. Add 3, it's still positive. So there's no way that this will come out to be less than 0, so the domain's all real numbers. But if you don't catch that, and you're actually trying to solve it, you'll bring 3 over to the other side. And if you still don't catch it, you'll try and square root both sides, and aha! At some point, you're going to realize you can't square root a negative number unless you're working with imaginary numbers. And right now, we are not. So, there's no problem with the domain. This will never be 0, so I can plug anything in I want. And if I can plug anything in I want, the domain are my x's from negative infinity to positive infinity and beyond. All right, so moving on to the next one. Let's take a look at, uh, well, let's do another square root that actually will have a limit on the domain. So x squared minus 4. Okay, well, oh, nice 4. That's what I get for looking forward while I'm writing. <coughs> Well, okay, once again, x is in the square root symbol, so what's inside the square root symbol, the even root, has to remain positive. So, x is squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. That means that x squared has to be greater than or equal to 4 after you add the 4 over to the other side. And then finally, we got that little power of 2. We need to undo that. So I'm going to square root both sides. And don't forget you have both a positive and negative answer. So x has to be greater than or equal to 2. And x has to be, I'm changing the direction of the sign for the negative answer. Don't forget that with powers of 2 when you're using inequalities. Less than negative 2. So there's my domain. x has to be greater than 2 and less than negative 2? Huh. So what the heck does that mean? Just means what it says. From negative infinity up until negative 2, and it can't equal 2 because I can square root 0, or you have to use values that start at 2 and go to infinity. And of course, we all know that's and beyond. Uh, so if you plug in, say, 3, 3 squared is 9 minus 4 is positive, and so you can take the square root of it. If you plug in negative 3, negative 3 squared is positive 9, not negative 9. Positive 9 minus 4 is also be positive, so boom, there you go. These values will work in this equation, domain. All right, I don't hear my warning bell going off, so that means I have time for more examples. Oh, let's see, what else? f of x is the square root of x plus 5 over x plus 2. Well, now this equation gives us both problems. We, all, we can't divide by 0, and we can't take an even root of a negative number. Got to check both of them if you've got both issues in your graph. So, x cannot equal negative 2. Now the top. The top, let's uh, highlight that. x plus 5 must remain greater than or equal to 0. So, when you solve that inequality, x has to remain greater than or equal to negative 5. Now, x can be greater than or equal to negative 5, but negative 2 is also bigger than negative 5, and you can't use that value. So, your final domain is your x's, such that 
It's from negative infinity up until negative 5. I guess, uh, woo, no, it's not. No, 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 no. Negative 5 is the smallest x I can use. Sorry about that. So, negative 5, got infinity stuck in my head. Negative 5 up until we get to a value of negative 2. And then I can skip over that because I can't use exactly 2. Pick back up on the other side of negative 2 and go to infinity. And beyond, yes, I know. All right, so there's my domain for this function. You got to check the radical, which if it's got an even root, and you got to check that you don't divide by zero. There you go. These numbers I can plug into that function and not make it undefined. All righty, I think I have time for one more example, and I won't scratch my nails down the board. I'll just finish with a big old bam, and that is f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 7 plus the square root of negative x plus 2. Let's see if this works. Again, even roots. Now let's take a 4 in here. I'm, writing, I'm tired of writing square roots. Even roots. Okay, can't divide by, or uh, you can't even root a negative number. So once again, this has to remain greater than or equal to 0. So, x minus 7 has got to be greater than or equal to 0. And negative x plus 2 has to remain greater than or equal to 0. What do we got? Well, this says that x has to be, after you add both sides by 7, greater than or equal to 7. And here we're going to need to subtract by 2. Negative x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Now we're going to divide by negative 1. And I am going to show that step. Because when you divide by a negative number, please remember to change the direction of your inequality. And we get x is less than or equal to 2. Okay, so I have to meet both of those restrictions if um, I'm going to be able to find the domain of, or excuse me, work out this equation. Both of these radicals are in the same equation, so I have to meet both of them both requirements. Woo! Well, can I? If I plug in a number big